Welcome everybody to primary source analysis for kids. Remember, when we look at a primary source, we want to get to know the item. We want to observe all the parts. We want to try to make some sense of it and then we can use it as historical evidence. To analyze this image, we will be using this awesome resource from the National Archives and I will put the link before below so that you too can access it, but you can always go to archives.gov where they have different worksheets for analyzing different types of primary sources. Piece by piece, I will be revealing today's primary source. Pay attention to all of the little details. Now let's analyze this primary source. This was a painting. What did you see as you looked at the painting? Pause the video if you need to and write down everything that you saw. Look at the colors. Is this photo black and white or color? Is there a caption? If so, what does the caption tell you? Captions are words that help explain a picture. It can be a title or sometimes a little sentence or two. In this case, there is no caption. Let's observe the parts. Do you see people in this photo? Do you see objects or do you see both? Take a look at the people. What are the people in this painting doing? If you need to, again, you can pause and take time to write down what is going on in the painting. There are lots of different objects in these paintings. Did you catch them? What do you think the objects are used for that you see in this painting? I see them on the walls, in people's laps, on the tables. Now I want you to write two words that describe the photo. And I want some good, juicy, meaty, descriptive adjectives here. For this last column, we are really gonna stretch our brains and look for as many clues as possible to try and answer these questions. First, who do you think took this photo? Who was the creator? Next, where do you think this was taken? Look around, are there any clues that can tell us where these people might be located? Now, list something, one of those clues that's gonna help you prove where it was taken. Next, why do you think the photo was taken? Why would anyone want to capture this moment in a painting? And last, how does this painting or photo, I use both words, how does this compare to modern times? How does it compare to something we might see today? Are there any differences between what you see in the painting and what you see when you look around you today in the world? Write all of these things down. And the last section of our worksheet says, where do you think you can go to get more information about the people or objects in this photo? Well, you can start by looking up Declaration of Independence by John Trumbull. That is the name of this painting. Let's take a moment to discuss today's primary source. Again, the name of this painting is Declaration of Independence and the painter is John Trumbull. 
the painting is sometimes incorrectly described as showing the signing of the Declaration of Independence, but it's actually not. This was just the draft for the Declaration of Independence that they were turning in to see if it was going to be accepted or not. It's an oil on canvas painting, and it's actually really big in real life. It's 12 feet by 18 feet, really, really big. John Trumbull visited a lot of the people in the painting because he really wanted to see them and get real life portraits of them. The painting shows 42 out of the 56 people who actually signed the Declaration of Independence. And some people in the end decided they did not want to put their name on their document. It could have been very dangerous for them or damaging to their political careers or their lives. Fun fact, next time you come across a $2 bill, yes, they are real, look at the back and you will see Trumbull's Declaration of Independence on the back of the $2 bill. Well, thank you for joining me, Mrs. P at Mrs. Civics in History. And I hope that you enjoyed this and you can show me that you did by either liking or commenting or sharing it with a friend, or you can subscribe. See you next time.